When solving an equation that involves a radical, radicals with even indices behave differently than radicals with odd indices. First, we'll consider radicals with an even index. This could be a square root, fourth root, sixth root, etc. A radical with an even index has two correct roots, both the positive root and the negative root. Specifically for square roots, we can say that every positive number has two square roots. One of them is positive and the other is negative. For example, let's consider the square root of 9. Because the square root of a number can either be positive or negative, when considering the square root of 9, we must put a positive or negative sign in front of the radical sign, like this. This tells us that the square root of 9 can either be positive 3 or negative 3. We can shorten this by stating that the positive or negative square root of 9 is positive or negative 3. This makes sense because positive 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. And negative 3 squared is equal to negative 3 times negative 3, which is also equal to 9. To solve for a variable with an even exponent, we would show the following steps. For example, we're given that x squared equals 16, and we're asked to find x. We can do this by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is x, and we show the square root of 16 as the positive or negative square root of 16, which is positive or negative 4. So we'll generalize by stating that when an equation involves a variable with an even exponent, there are two correct solutions, both the positive value and the negative value. Now we'll consider an equation involving a radical with an odd index. Let's say we want to find the cube root of 64. We can write the equation x cubed equals 64 and solve for x. We'll try substituting positive 4 for x. So we have 4 cubed equals 64. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. This is correct, so positive 4 works as the cube root of 64. Now we'll try substituting negative 4 for x. So we tentatively have negative 4 cubed equals 64. Negative 4 cubed is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, and positive 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. And negative 64 is not equal to 64, so this is incorrect. So we can state that the cube root of 64 is positive 4, but not negative 4. Or we can simply state that the cube root of 64 equals 4. So there's only one correct solution to the cube root of a number. Unlike square roots, we can find the cube root of a negative number. Let's say we want to find the cube root of negative 64. We can write this equation, x cubed equals negative 64. First we'll try substituting positive 4 for x. And we tentatively get 4 cubed equals negative 64. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 times 4 equals positive 64. But positive 64 is not equal to negative 64, so positive 4 is not a correct cube root of negative 64. Now we'll substitute negative 4 for x. We have negative 4 cubed equals negative 64. Negative 4 cubed is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, and positive 16 times negative 4 equals negative 64. And we end up with negative 64 equals negative 64, which is correct. So negative 4 is a correct cube root of negative 64. So we can state that the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4, but not positive 4. So we'll state that the cube root of negative 64 is just negative 4. And there's only one correct solution for the cube root of negative 64. We'll generalize by saying that when an equation involves a variable with an odd exponent, there is only one correct solution. To summarize, when an equation involves a variable with an even exponent, there are two correct solutions, both the positive value and the negative value. For example, if x squared equals 25, then x 
equals the positive or negative square root of 25, which is positive or negative 5. However, when an equation involves a variable with an odd exponent, there's only one correct solution. For example, if x cubed equals 27, there's only one value for the cube root, so there's no positive or negative sign in front of the radical. And we say that x equals the cube root of 27. And the cube root of 27 is only positive 3.